Hello, my name is John Arnold and this is PhotoWalkthrough.com, Tutorial 7, Chapter 5. This is the final chapter of our distorted tree image. As I mentioned last week, I'm on holiday in France at the moment. Uh, right now I should be exploring Paris with my camera, and with luck I'll come back with a few decent pictures, but more than anything else, I'm hoping to just enjoy my visit. So anyway, if this show wasn't released on Monday, sorry about that, I'm going to try and release it as close to Monday as I can, and uh, if you're listening to it now, then I've obviously launched it at some point. Uh, also, I mentioned last week the audience survey, and I'd just like to mention it again. If you have a couple of minutes, please visit photowalkthrough.com and click on the audience survey button and complete the survey. It will help me understand what kind of people are watching the show, and that'll be useful when I'm talking to sponsors or asking for competition prizes. And the postcards are still going out. I've had absolutely loads of requests for them, and the first batch have now run out, but the second batch should arrive any day. So if you'd like a double-sized postcard printed with the Western at Low Tide image from Tutorial 1, just email me your postal address to photowalkthrough at gmail.com, and I'll post one out to you. They're free, and I will send them anywhere in the world. Right, let's get started with the photo editing. This is the final chapter, and this week I'm going to cover some selective blurring, some selective sharpening, and then a final lightening on this image. So, um, what you can see here is how we left it last week. Um, we left it, we'd just done the soft light work on this image, which makes quite a big difference just to, um, to bring a sort of a central focus to this image and also to treat, draw your eye to the parts of the image that were the whole point of the shot. So I've put some detail down here just to balance out the top. I've brought some light onto the sides of the branches. And I then used a levels um, adjustment layer to brighten the whole thing. Um, and also I've just realized I left an, uh, a layer mask on that levels adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click on that layer mask and drag it to the trash can. I don't need that. And I'm also just going to rename that layer so that I can see what it was I did. Um, right, so let's start off with a selective blur. And the first step in the selective blur uh, is to get a, a, a version of this image as it stands now and blur it. So the way I do that is, um, I've mentioned this keystroke before, uh, it's Control shift alt n which makes a new layer and doesn't name it or anything and Control shift alt e which stamps visible uh, and on a Mac those keyboard shortcuts would be command option shift n and command option shift e and of course you can also do that by the uh, shortcuts in the menus and the tool palettes the way you would do that would be to create a new layer by clicking the new layer button down here at the bottom of the layers palette and then hold down the alt or option key and in the layers menu choose uh, merge visible uh, and it's important that you hold down the alt key uh, if I just show you that it's made it's merged into that new layer that we've just created if you don't do that let me show you what happens I'll make a new layer and if I don't don't hold down the alt key and do layer merge visible it flattens everything up into a background layer that's not what we want so I'm going to undo that by doing control Z or command Z on a Mac and I'm going to throw away those layers that I don't need. So the quick way to do that, um, this is one of those things that's not very easy to find in the, in the menus in Photoshop. So I suggest if you've got a notebook and you write down keyboard shortcuts, this is one worth writing down. Um, Control Alt Shift N and Control Alt Shift E in that order, or on a Mac, Command Option Shift N, Command Option Shift E will give you a new layer with everything that you've got visible stamped into it. Now this is going to be our blur layer, so as usual I double click on the layer name and um, I'm going to put blur image just so that I can see what that layer is for. And I'm then going to go into filter and I'm going to choose blur, Gaussian blur. And as you can see that's blurred it quite nicely and it pops up this little window here. And I'm really more interested in that view than I am in this view. I could zoom out and try and do the same thing in that view there, but I don't see the point in that. So let's just drag the Gaussian blur down. Remember the reason we're doing this is that we're trying to replicate the Holger effect and the reason why we're interested in blurring is that the Holger lens is not a very good lens. It tends to go very blurry towards the edges. So I'm just going to use the Gaussian blur layer here 
Um, on this particular image, it's probably between 7 and 9 pixels I want, so I'll leave it at 8.6 there. Now that's quite a blurry version of our image, as you can see if I turn that on and off. Um, what I'm going to do now, because I only want this blur to affect uh, parts of the image, uh, specifically around the edges, I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer by clicking this button down here at the bottom of the layers palette. This is the add layer mask button. If I click that, you'll see on the image, that, on the layer we had selected, we've now got this extra layer mask here to the right. You can click on either of those and select which of the, the either the image data or the layer mask data that you want to edit. So I want to choose the layer mask data. And there are a couple of ways I can go about doing this. Um, the easy way would be to choose the gradient tool, which is this tool over here, and then choose a circular gradient, which is the second gradient along here at the top. And I want black to white. So this is the this is the colours in the gradient that I'm going to use. So if I click on that and choose the third, uh, the first one along, which is foreground to background, and press OK. So I've got white and black there. So wherever I start drawing, I'm going to get white, and wherever I stop drawing, I'm going to get black. So in this case, I actually want it the other way around because I want no, I want it the first way around. I want to reveal the blur at the edges. And what I'm going to do now with my gradient tool selected is just draw a line from the edge of the image to the middle of the image. Now this is not quite the way I'm going to leave it at the end. Uh, and what I really want is the focus to center on the, the parts of the image with the detail. So I'm not quite going to choose the middle. I'm going to just sort of go slightly to the right of the middle and maybe slightly up from the middle as well. But, ah. Now, you see what I've done there? If you look at the layer mask, it's the center of the circle is where I started drawing. So I did that wrong. So Control z to undo that, and I'll start where I want the, um, the center of the circle to be, and I'll draw it out to the edge of the image. And now I've got white in the middle and black at the edge, which is also not what I wanted. So if I press Control i to invert, that inverts the layer mask. And you can see we've now got black in the middle of the layer mask and white at the edge of the layer mask. At last, got it right. So, what that's doing, the way a layer mask works, white reveals, black conceals. So the white around the edge of the layer mask is revealing the blurred layer. And the black in the middle of the layer mask is concealing the blur and therefore allowing the sharp version to show through behind. Now that's probably not quite enough of this image in focus. I'm, I'm, I'd certainly want some focus down here. Um, I'm not very happy that we've lost detail here and here and here. So I'm now going to, having done that with the gradient tool, I'm going to show you the other way I would do this. So I'm going to throw away that layer mask. And no, I don't want to apply the layer mask before removing, so I'm just going to delete the layer mask without applying it. I'm going to add the layer mask again by clicking the Add Layer Mask button. So here's our layer mask. Oops. We've um, got the layer mask selected, and this time I'm, I do most of these things just with a brush. Um, now, the layer mask, when it comes in, is completely white. It reveals the, the layer that it's on completely. So with my brush, and I'm going to make it quite a large brush, and X is, uh, gives me black as my foreground color. I'm going to now paint in the areas where I want detail. So I'm certainly going to want plenty of detail here. So pressing quite hard. I'm just going to do a sort of a, a big fuzzy black blob there on the layer mask, which is going to reveal all that detail. And I'm going to just more gently, I'm going to let the detail fade out up here. So the further I get from the center, the less hard I press. But I am going to just try and include detail in those areas where I particularly find the detail on the tree interesting. I'm going to allow the detail to come in. Right, now, first problem. See here we've got detail on the front of the tree and we've got blur in this background here and we've got detail here which is not really very good. So, it doesn't look right. It looks like looks like uh, distance blur there and it, it that this is the same distance in the background, so this should be similarly blurred. So I'm just going to, with a smaller brush and zoomed in, I'm going to paint 
white on my layer mask just to reveal the blur again. White reveals, so white is revealing the blur on that part of the background just so that the only thing that's in focus is the foreground tree that I'm interested in showing you. And I've slightly overshot there, so painting black again on this branch here just to bring back the detail on that part of the tree. A little bit there because I, I like that bit of detail on that branch there as well. And I've, I've done the same thing here, look, so once again painting white on the background just to reveal the blur on that part of the background that's way, way, way behind our main subject and therefore should be out of focus. So this is sort of a, a blending of both um, a distance focus trick as well as trying to get that Holger edge blur all in, all in one blur layer here. And I've probably revealed too much detail on the ground there, so just painting a little bit of white on the foreground. Let's just paint a little bit of black, just bring in some detail along there. That was too much. All the way around the edge of this tree, I'm going to have to put put right all these areas that were that we painted detail in, that we allowed detail to show through, where I actually want it to be blurred. So I think that's pretty much everywhere. That's another bit of tree in the background there, so I'm not going to worry about that being in focus. That's okay. Let's zoom that out and see how it looks. That's that's doing a pretty good job of just giving it a, a sort of um, a filmic uh, almost um, blur to it that, that really focuses your eye in on the center of the the image. It really brought, draws the eye to the tree itself. I think it's looking pretty good. Now, just as a final step, I'm just going to drag the opacity down a little bit. Let's drag it to 50% and see how it looks. It's just That will allow some of the detail to show through whilst using the blurred layer as a sort of a... Um, it'll almost give it a misty, blurry look. A bit like the effect you'd get if you put Vaseline on your lens, which is the old way of doing a soft focus trick. That 50% is, is too much. I'm going to drag it back up to, let's, let's call it 80 or something. That's looking pretty good now. Just trying to take the image, pressing tab just to so that I can see the image with that with none of those palettes in the way. I think that's looking pretty good. There's definitely a, a blur about the rest of the shot, but we're able to see some detail through. So I like that. That's my blur layer done. The next step is to do just a little bit of selective sharpening, and um, this is a, quite an involved little little trick. So once again, I'm going to use the uh, Control Alt Shift N, Control Alt Shift E trick to stamp another visible, uh, stamp another uh, layer with everything we've got showing. Um, now I shouldn't have done that. Let me before I do that, let me throw that that layer away because I actually want to do this on the version of the image that's not got the blur. So I've just turned off that layer with the blur on it. Let's do Control alt shift n Control alt shift e and give us our sharpening layer. And I'm going to drag that up above the blur layer that we just worked on. I can turn my blur layer back on. The reason you're not seeing the blur appear is that it's behind this sharpening layer that we've just created, which has got the completely focused version. So that's our sharpening layer. Now, the way I do a selective sharpen, uh, first of all, go into the filter menu and choose other high pass. And what high pass does is it looks for uh, contrast within the image. And anywhere where there's a strong contrast between uh, a pixel and its adjacent pixels, it will give it, um, uh, you, it'll start to produce these edges. Um, so you can see where the strong contrasts are. And this is all part of the way sharpening works. Um, so yes, the where there's no contrast, you get mid-gray. Uh, where there's a high contrast, you get white or black. So you can see it's giving a sort of a an edge detection effect to this shot and 
on this particular shot what I'm looking for is to bring out the detail on the sides of the branches so I'm just going to drag my radius up and down and that's that's clearly way too far because we're starting to see the shape of the tree and everything what I'm actually after is detail not form so I'm going to drag it down until I'm seeing detail and not really so much of the original image in it um, now once you've got to that sort of level um, typically these sharpening tr this, this sharpening trick uh, you'd use for sharpening an entire image and what you'd be looking for is not to get any of the kind of haloing effects let me just drag this radius up you see along the bottom of the branch here you can see quite a, 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 a visible white halo and a black halo along that very sharp contrast edge and the way this this high pass sharpening works if you would apply that to the entire image uh, and if you were to do it unsubtly you would see those halos in the final image now in this case because we're doing a selective sharpen I'm not going to be using that part of the sharpening layer so it doesn't matter that I can see those light and dark halos so don't be afraid to go fairly strong with this in this case that's that's too low that's probably a little too high so I'm looking somewhere in the six or seven range I think which would be a pretty strong sharpening if this was to apply to the entire image so let's just zoom in oops just painted white on that um, if we zoom in we can see that detail not so much of the form of the tree and once again I'm going to add a layer mask to this um, so I'm going to click the new layer mask button, there's our new layer mask and this time I'm going to fill the layer mask with black because I only want to paint the detail in in those areas I don't want it to apply to the entire image so the way I'm going to fill with black is I can see black is my background colour on my colour palette here so I'm going to do control delete and that fills with the background colour and that would be command delete on a Mac right so I've got my nicely blurred image I've got my sharpening layer with the layer mask completely black so we're completely obscuring the sharpening at the moment um, and what I'm going to do I'm going to zoom in so that I've got some context context but I want to get as close to 100% as I can so that when I start painting in the sharpening I can see what effect it's having and the way I'm going to paint in the sharpening is I'm just going to paint white on the layer mask layer and what you'll see happen looks a bit funky to start with I paint it there for example you're seeing grey now the reason for that is that I haven't yet changed the blending mode of this layer I like to do it this way around so that I can see where I've painted in my detail because you tend to get this it's not showing very well here but you tend to get on most images this sort of silvery area of the image where you've painted the detail in it helps you see more clearly where you're painting detail in where you're painting sharpening in rather what I what I call detail here sharpening doesn't really make more detail sharpen up you'll have heard this before if you've seen any tutorials on sharpening sharpening just enhances contrasts along edges so it gives the illusion of more detail it's not actually creating more detail and when you're doing this sharpening you can afford to be a little bit slapdash with it you can go over edges the, the problem areas if there are going to be any will be along this is completely black against almost uh, against quite bright gray here um, that sort of area if I was to paint sharpening in along there might give us a nasty halo but in these areas here like the bark the sharpening will do a very good job of convincing the eye that there is extra detail there so I've painted in it looks a bit funky at the moment but you can kind of get the idea you can see with the areas I've painted the detail in they've got a sort of flat gray now the final step to this sharpening is to change the blending mode of this sharpening layer to soft light and if I was to turn this layer on and off now look carefully here this is the main part of the image that I've sharpened if I turn this layer on and off you can see that it's just bringing out the contrast in those cracks in the bark and just brings a little more detail in on those areas of the image so that's that's our sharpening and that's probably too much zooming out let's just drag that down to 50% see whether or not that looks a little better these sharpening changes very difficult to judge without going in close to 100% it's quite a subtle effect but it is just adding a little bit of punch a little bit of contrast to these parts of the image
and I think that's looking reasonably good. So I think that's probably our sharpening done. And if you look at the layer mask, if I just alt click on the layer mask, you can see we've added very little actually sharpening to the image there. It's only very select parts of the image that we've sharpened. Um, the final step in this image is just to do a final lightening. And if you've been watching the show for a while, you'll know straight away how I'm going to do this. I'm going to add a new curves adjustment layer. I'm going to press OK on it. And I'm going to go to screen blending mode. I don't need the layer mask. And I'm going to drag the opacity down to zero. And then I'm just going to drag it up just a little until I get a sort of a brightness that I'm happy with. And in this case, I think somewhere around the 15 to 20% mark. Yeah, about 15%. So if I just turn that layer on and off, you can see that's just it's just like it's lo turning on a light bulb behind the behind the image there. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's that's the end of this image. Um, right. Um, I, I've never mentioned this before, uh, but a couple of people have asked now, so uh, I thought I'd mention it. All the images I cover on photobookthrough.com as the main tutorial images are available to buy as prints from my personal photography website, which is johnarnoldphotography.com. So if you're interested in any of these pictures, please do just drop me an email, and I will uh, I'll be delighted to sell prints of those things. Um, also, as I mentioned last week, the podcast awards for 2006 are open for nominations. So if you really like our show, please consider giving us a vote there. Uh, you can find the podcast awards site at www.podcastawards.com. And the link is in the show notes along with everything else. Right, that's it for this one. I will catch you next week when we'll start tutorial 8 on another new image. Thanks for watching.